What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here, and today we are reviewing episode four of The Last of Us TV series on HBO. And I'm joined here by the Marsman crew. And as always, we like to do our non spoiler review in the very beginning, where we discuss obviously our ratings and what we would give the episode in a non spoiler fashion. So you can watch this if you haven't seen the episode yet. And in the second half of the video, we are going to give our spoiler discussions of the entirety of what we felt and our just general feelings of the overall episode as a whole going forward so i want to start us off with our overall impressions from the episode and discussing our non-spoiler uh, rating afterwards so i think overall i thought this was a a solid episode i think the only downside is that overall i think this was what roughly what 45 ish minutes i think uh in, in time maybe 50 ish 50 minutes maximum and i think when you're looking at the episode the downside for me is that you felt like it was very condensed Sure, there's a lot of cool things that happened, especially the fights with um, with this new group, the Hunters, uh, that was located in Kansas City, which is a little bit different. But the key thing is that I feel like the episode felt rushed in some ways. I thought that they had good dialogue between Joel and Ellie. I thought Bella Ramsey did very well as Ellie. Uh, obviously, Pablo Pascal is doing great as Joel so far. And I feel like they had some good, good dynamic going on between the characters. And just by like looking at statistics alone... The episode itself got 17% more views than it did on last week's episode. So it clearly seems that a lot of people really wanted to check out what happened on this one. And we even got some new characters and we saw some brutal stuff happen here. And I'm obviously going to talk more about it in the spoiler discussion. But overall, I thought they did a solid job in this episode. So, uh, you know, I think that's just kind of my impressions that I saw so far. Short, but there is stuff that happened here. And I want to get to Haki first. What is your impressions of this episode? Yeah, so uh, the impression is it was a good episode. I'm, I'm in agreement with you. I think we're all going to be in agreement um, as to probably the one downfall um, is going to be how short it was. Um, and, you know, it had to do a little bit with how long the last episode was. And, you know, if they correctly cut up the time, they, they probably should have gave more time to this episode uh, to give us a little bit more. But um it's definitely back on track with this episode uh i saw the action that i wanted to see um and it didn't even have to be with uh you know the the infected it was you know human to human action so um you know it was it was good as long as they keep trucking forward with with this type of of uh, uh of episode uh you know the next episode and on i think it'll you know continue to be a good show yeah so angelica what'd you think here man um, I thought it was a good build-up episode. That's really kind of what this episode was. It was kind of building up into what what we're anticipating to be a strong... I know it's not mid-season because they only have nine episodes, but it feels like the big mid-season kind of splash um, this upcoming Friday um, with this following episode. And it's directed by the same director. So th it was interesting to hear or we, what we saw is that most of these episodes have been chapter to chapter, one episode per chapter, this is going to be the first two episode chapter. So, you know, interesting dynamic here. And obviously for a very important part, a little bit different than the game, but a lot of similarities in dialogue that they added in this episode, which I know a lot of people will like. So overall, pretty solid build up episode. So now we got to get to our ratings. And uh, just to give some context here, last week uh, I had given episode three a six overall. I felt like it was the lowest episode of the show and when i'm looking at this episode i think it was better than last week i would give this episode probably a 7.5 out of 10 i thought it was better overall because we finally i think the biggest thing is that you get a lot more of the dynamic between ellie and joel right that's what i've came to see the show for is this dynamic built between the two best actors so far overall right? and they did that in the entire time they built a lot of good dialogue between the two of them they even went into some of the backstory between the two of them. They even went to kind of the themes of Last of Us, and and they kind of really emphasized that concept, especially with the the fear of not necessarily fear of the infected, but the fear of the people are being worse than the infected, and that was kind of a key thing theme that Last of Us kind of really focuses on, and they did a good job in doing this, and and really focus on the emotion that was present in this in the game in the story and i and like you said and so the they follow the game more in this episode which i think a lot of people were on board with because of the fact that it you know it that's what got us to the dance was the game and the, the way that the story arc was kind of produced even having new characters i thought they did a good job with them and the, i think the main biggest thing 
is the fact that this was a Ellie and Joel story got people, including myself, more happier, especially with this dynamic we see building, right? And I think that's kind of the big thing I was looking at. Last episode was a good one, but I felt like this was was better than that one. I thought this is probably not as good as the last, the first two, but is definitely better than last week, in my opinion. So I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. Angelica, I'll let you go next here. What is your rating and why did you give it that? Um, I had it at a 7.8 last week. I have it at an 8 this week. And the reason why it's not higher is because it's a build-up episode. Um, it was shortened. It's about 45-minute runtime, um, building up to next week, which is supposed to be about 59 minutes. So it's going to be a longer episode next week. Um, but again, really strong acting. I, I think even last week, whether people liked the direction or the writing that uh, that went on, one thing that I've been assured of these first four episodes has been good acting. They've had really strong acting, really strong dialogue, and you see kind of Joel and Ellie's uh, growing and that conflict. And what I really like the most is in video games, you know, Joel and Ellie are just mowing down people. I mean, it, it's part of the game, the gameplay. You have to kill a lot of people to get to where you got to get to. Um, and in this episode, and I know we'll go dive into spoilers, it was more humanizing to take a life where they kind of brought that these are people that you are or, you know, yeah, people that you are killing. So it brought some humanization to it. Strong conflict and the emotions were still there. So I give it an eight. Um, solid score for me. Yeah. So, Haki, what would you think, man? I know you were kind of in a similar boat as me last week. So I want to get your feeling here. How do you feel about the rating of this episode? Yeah, so last week um, I had mine, I think, at a 6, 7. Um, this one I definitely thought um, was was definitely better. Um, I have mine at an 8.4. Um, and, you know, I what I think was it could it could have gotten to that 9 if um, if it had 15 or 20 more minutes, you know, to work with. If, if, you know, if they shortened last week's a little bit and gave this episode a little bit more time, even though it was a kind of a build-up episode, as Langella Kill said, um, it was still just missing to me. It was missing just a, a little bit more time, maybe explaining some of the characters that we, we saw, some of the new characters um, that we saw. So again, it, it is a buildup episode, so I, I get that. Um, but definitely, you know, like I said, back on track. So um, I'm happy that, that the direction uh, that this episode went, and I'm ex very excited to see uh, what, what happens next week. Yeah, see, like the biggest thing that I'm looking at, and we'll talk more about in the spoiler section, but I... I like that this had more action in it and I like that yeah next episode is going to be a lot bigger I think in level of things are occurring um my only fear is is that like I think both of you guys said here is that it looks like that this is it was originally going to be chapter for chapter episode for episode and then obviously there's 12 chapters in the game only nine episodes overall that means there's going to be going to be some things that are condensed but now you're kind of you're can you're you're long you're you're making episode chapters longer over two spans of episodes so now it's like the fear that comes into play is what does this mean for other chapters that are deemed to be more important are they now going to be super condensed and that might be something that could cause issue right because we've seen this happen with 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 uh with game of thrones we've seen this happen in sometimes with house of dragon you know hbo sometimes oh, hbo, HBO yeah. is seems the common denominator here or sometimes they feel like they will condense something yeah. just so they can focus on other things that may not need to be focused on, right? And I feel like that is a fear of mine, right? Right now, looking at this this show, it's great. It, trust me, it's one of the probably the best game adaption show out there, other than obviously my opinion, Edge Runners. But the point is, is that it's feeling like that trend that HBO has, and I'm a little nervous about it because you have a great you have a great opportunity here to really. You know, to nail this to be a ten out of ten show, and yeah. it feels like if you screw up, if you screw up pacing, that could really screw up the future of this show. Of this not the season two is already secured, but you could screw up the popularity of what it could be if you don't pace it the right way. Uh, listen, I, I I agree with you. I, I would push back on Edge Runners because Edge Runners is not it's it added it's an adaptation of the world of Cyberpunk, but it wasn't on the Cyberpunk game. I think this is kind of harder to do to a adapt an actual game you know, as close as you can get to that game into this. Um, but you mentioned it earlier. You, you mentioned it earlier. The popularity has grown each week. So I agree with you on, I kind of wish it 
got another episode or two because we know it's going to be condensed. I mean, the fear is it, it's going to be obvious is how condensed is it going to be? Because how do you get nine episodes and 12 chapters? Something has to give here. So but to me, it's been working for a lot of people. It's been growing every week. It's, you know, like you said, 17 percent increase from this week, uh, from last week to this week in viewership. And that was with the Grammys going head to head with them. So, you know, it's they're doing something right. But I do agree. I wish it had another episode or two. Yeah. Hockey, any last words before we head off to the spoiler section? Just a quick question there. The Edge Runners is anime, correct? It's yeah, a, anime. yeah, it's like an yeah, anime. anime. Yeah. Yeah. This is obviously live action. Or it's, live, it's probably the, yeah. it's the best live action yeah, game I mean, adapted. Yeah. It's probably, it's just, I think overall I say game adaptation. I'm going to say Edge Runners because it's, it was just, I feel like th- it's a, its own world, but it took the world of Cyberpunk and made it more interesting than the game did, which got, it got people to go. It's like similar to what is happening with Last of Us. The Last of Us show is doing well. So all of a sudden, people are buying the game to test yeah. out the game, right? To see how it is. Like Cyberpunk was in the dumps, and then Edge Runners came out and made people go play the game because there's an Edge Runner, Edge Runner update. You know what I mean? Like it's like if a show is bad, if it, if it's bad, you it won't matter. But if it's good, then people will flock to the game, right? That's that's literally what new what we've seen. Sure, yeah, yeah, new people that will go test it out. And uh, and so yeah. So any last words, hockey, before we head on to the spoiler section? That's it, man. Well, listen, guys. Uh, make sure that if you like this type of content, you leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. And let us know what you think about the episode when you watch it, and you know, give your comments or give your ratings in the comments below. And go check us out on Twitch as well. We do our live streams at least three days a week, Tuesday, Thursdays, and a wild card day. Go check that out. And also join us on social media on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Discord, and many more. And those are all located in the description below. Uh, We're going to be heading off into our spoiler discussion. So stick around if you want to see that and get our thoughts about the rest of the episode. Now on to the spoiler section. Well, guys, spoiler section here. And uh, like I said in the earlier part, I thought that this was a solid episode. In my opinion, it was better than last week's because of the fact that we're getting more of the Ellie Joel dynamic, which is what I really wanted to get uh, from this entire show. I, I think focusing on that dynamic between the two of them, establishing the relationship really emphasizes and really hits me more than than obviously Bill and Frank. But at the end of the day, whatever, that's episode three. We're in episode four. So I want to talk about the key events that happened and we're going to give our overall discussions about what we feel about the episode. So obviously now Ellie and Joel are traveling west, going with, with Bill's truck and they basically go to a, uh, you know, there's a fear that there's they could possibly be, you know, warranting attention. So they go hide in the wilderness, basically stay the night. And obviously Joel is kind of paranoid about what could happen because he's always looking behind their over their shoulder. to kind of feel like, hey, you know, there's a possibility people might be here. The whole episode kind of focuses on that theme that he's always paranoid looking over their shoulder just in case something were to happen. Um, and we'll get to kind of why that the theme of that kind of, you know, later on we'll talk about it. But Essentially, they survive the night you know, they keep traveling. And essentially, we find out on the trip that Ellie could keep pestering Joel about some questions, specifically about Tommy. We find out a lot about Tommy's background. I think this is also in the game, too. They kind of give a brief little discussion about Tommy. But essentially, he was a he was in the military. They call he calls him a joiner, as in he's always joining a movement like he's just jumps in and then he realizes he's made a he mistake. Wants to be a hero. Yeah, he yeah. wants to be always wants to be a hero of some kind. He joins up something that he thinks is going to be great. Then he leaves and jumps to something else. So Joel and Tommy basically started out as smugglers, like we already know in Boston. That's where they met Tess. And then Tommy meets Marlene, joins the Fireflies, ends up leaving the Fireflies to go be a part of a different group that's in, located in Wyoming. And that was literally the last time that Joel has really talked to him. So he knows that he's there. He's somewhere there. And, and even Ellie's like, well, what happens if he's not there? And he's like, well, I'll find him. I'll, I'm very persistent and I will find him in some way, some uh, way, shape or form. Because that was his goal to begin with. He wanted to go with Tess to go find Tommy and bring them back with them, right? That was the whole, that was the start of the show with that concept. So now he's still on his mission. And Joel and Ellie, when they finally get to Kansas City, and this was actually a uh, a change from, from the game. It was originally Pittsburgh, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Just, it honestly makes them more West than they were in the game, which in the game, it just felt like we only got to Pittsburgh from Boston and now yeah. we're already stuck. So they get to a roadblock and essentially... You know, this is a problem, right? You just need to get through Kansas City and get to the next area, but now they have to go around. The problem is that now you're going through the city itself, and the, the issue is, is that they get ambushed. Very similar kind of event that happens from the show to the game. 
where essentially they use like a person that's pretending to be injured and he's like, oh, please help. And now Ellie's like, yeah, we're going to help him. And Joel in the game, he's just like, he, one of the he, coldest he, lines in video games. Ever. Yeah, he, he's just like, uh, he basically, he's like, you know, he's, he's injured. He's like, no, he's not. No, he's like, yeah, we're going to help him. He's not hurt. And he yeah, he's not hurt. Yeah. And then he just buckles the thing, just runs his ass over in the game. <laughs> And then he's like, oh, no, he just, he just clapped by the truck. He just like yeah. lands like just dead. But then they get ambushed by a bunch of these guys. And in the in the show, it's only like a few. It's like almost like a scavenger group kind of like found them. And they, you know, they're trying to get more supplies. So they catch them. They ambush them. And you know, Joel, tell, Joel tell Ellie to like get into a hole, like go hide out. I'll take care of these guys. Joel kind of claps most of them. And then he gets attacked from behind. And now he's about to get killed. Ellie obviously hit a gun in her bag the but before they arrived there was what it was bill's gun and he gets she gets the gun and actually shoots the intruder behind and actually paralyzes him and shoots him in the spine and you know we see that moment where ellie realizes what she did she did a violent action and you know it's affecting her and joel doesn't really do any he doesn't joel doesn't come for her which is a big deal because you know she's a four she's like a 14 year old kid she's a kid and she just just paralyzes dude and he's just like go, go back in the hole uh, and then he finishes it right and and it was a big moment because you know it shows you the like the toughness of the situation and i even the directors uh had said this even neil drunkman said this like you know the moment that he could have you know comforted her and said hey, hey you know if it's gonna be okay he didn't right and this kind of gives kind of like a, a not really he wasn't planning on it but it almost like causes an issue where it's like it forces ellie to now toughen up right it's like you gotta be tough and you gotta just move past this and put all emotions down into your stomach and just move on, right? And that's something that, like, Joel, as the protector, has to do. It, 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 it all essentially is, like, inadvertently causing Ellie, and they say this in the in the director's cut, they say, inadvertently causing Ellie to become like Joel, like, to be that person that hides their emotions and puts it into their stomach and never really expressing what they're feeling, and this could eventually lead to a break of some kind, right? And that's kind of the thing that they're trying to hinting at in a way. Now, obviously, what happens is they, you know, they have to go hide out because all of a sudden all this noise alerted the rest of the group, which is the hunters. And this is a mirror from the game. Uh, we et actually get introduced to new characters, the leader of the hunters, which is Kathleen. Uh, and I believe her partner, I forgot his name. Uh, Pierce. I think. Pierce was his name. Yeah, Pierce was the other character, which ironically, Pierce is actually the actor that plays Tommy in the video games. Yeah. They always they actually dropped a few like of these actors, voice actors into the into the show to kind of give like a nice yeah. little like uh, nugget. Um, and so you get introduced to both these characters. We get introduced to kind of this group, more information here. They essentially overthrew the Fedra QZ that was in Kansas City and now took it over themselves. And, you know, Kathleen and I think uh, Angelica mentioned this to me when we were watching is like the issue with Kathleen is that her voice sounds like uh, you know, like it's the so mom soft. from it's hard um, to the, take her. Yeah, the mom like from a vicious, uh, a vicious from, tyrant series. Yeah, yeah. It, Kathleen's like the voice is like the mom. Like the mother-in-law from uh, from Ray Romano, it's like it's like if you get that voice actor and you just have her soft-spoken. She's from uh, something. I don't remember what it was. I don't she know where she's from. from. I, I just know her voice sounds uh, so like one of those moms that just like is very soft-spoken. Like, I, it's just like he doesn't sound like a a tyrant leader. But what we do see though is Kathleen is extremely brutal. Like she is, she has this paranoia that two two characters were from the games, Henry and Sam essentially are on the on the war path to go after her and to destroy the uh, destroy the community essentially and so she's like and oh this henry is henry ratted on to fedra about her brother yeah basically henry had it ratted to death. fedra about you know, about her brother so she th thinks this is all personal that you know henry's out to try to get her and that she's stoking up fears that oh this is henry this is henry's guys they're trying to kill us all this stuff so she's like we got to go hunt them down we got to go find them so one thing that was really interesting was how and this is in the director's cut too. They kind of mentioned that there's a scene where all of a sudden the hunters are now going house by house, breaking doors down, looking for Henry and Sam. And it's almost like, yeah, you overthrew Federal, which was almost like a tyrannical government, and you replaced it with your own tyrannical government. And it's like it's it's just a mirror of the same thing. It's just a different perspective. And that's kind of the the interesting tidbit that the Last of Us always was. It was like there's not really a good guy, bad guy. It's all about perspective of what side you're on is who the good guys bad guys are and that's always been a theme in the first game and the second game so now at this point you know ellie ellie and joel start talking when they're hiding away and she starts kind of expressing herself saying 
you know, because Joel's like, hey, listen, I'm really sorry that you had to go through that with killing that, basically injuring that guy. I killed him. You didn't kill him. So don't take this personal. And she's like, you know, it's not the first time I've had to do this before. And she kind of exudes, she kind of talks about it, but she doesn't mention what happened. And Joel, yeah. Joel tries to get it out of her, but she doesn't want to talk about it. And, you know, he's like, yeah, I understand. I, I have a lot of stuff in my closet. I don't want to talk about it either. Right. So, you know, he kind of just lets it go. But obviously, it's like sometimes, you know, that's kind of the moments where Joel does mess up, where he should press the map. Right. He, but he understands, like, you know, he's not in, he's not her father, but like he needs to kind of like take that initiative. But what ends up happening is, you know, you see how basically, they, they transition to the scene where Pierce and Kathleen basically are now ex ex separated from the group. They go to this back area. It was very interesting. This is uh, this is also kind of what happened in the game. This there is like an issue in the game, but it, it's like this in the show kind of really exudes it to a more. There's a big divot in the ground, right? And it kind of like they're sitting there, like uh, you know, Peter's like, this, "We got a problem, right? This is getting bigger and bigger, and we're not telling everybody about it." And, it could be a point where it gets really bad and we have to, we're going to have to plan for this. She's like, no, don't worry about it. We got to find Henry Sam first. Then we'll tell everyone about this thing. And he's like, I, I don't know about that. Yeah, the ground starts moving. It starts Probably moving like it's breathing yeah. and everyone's just like, oh, yeah. we got to get the hell out of yeah. here. Right. And, but the whole point is, is that we kind of can assume it's the fungus that's growing. Um, and it's showing that there is like stuff underground that, you know, there is the gonna, fungus networks. Yeah. Yeah. The, fu the fungus is networking and it looks like it's about to pop out. And, uh, you know, obviously we're getting some some good foreshadowing for what's going to happen next. But basically, Ellen and Jolie um, get to a kind of a safe house. It's like a big, big, big ass building that's like by maybe 40, 40 levels. And they finally get to the 30th level and they're like, hey, let's go chill on here. We should be all good. Joel kind of sets up a little booby trap for them so they know what's going on. And uh, all of a sudden, it's like a good dynamic part here. They start joking around, like making jokes, and they're both kind of smiling and laughing and and it's kind of ironic because Ellie's like, "Hey, you sure you're gonna be able to hear him? I know that you're hearing, you're hearing shot." And he's like, "No, nah, yeah, I'll hear him." Yeah. And and on his right ear is like kind of going going, and uh, you know he doesn't hear them at all, and they get held up by Henry and Sam at gunpoint, and that's how the episode ends. And yeah. it's kind of ironic because I was mentioning how Joel always has his guard up, right? Which that's always his thing, and so the one moment he doesn't have his guard up is when he's kind of like happy joking around with Ellie and he leaves his guard down. Yeah, and he noticed he fell good. asleep on his left ear and left his right ear open. He started on the right and left the left. And they said, your right ear is bad. You see him when he, they get caught at gunpoint, he's sleeping on his left ear and his right ear is up. So, yeah, so kind of like must have been in the middle yeah. of the night. He must have changed ears and yeah. that's essentially what happened. Now, it's kind of crazy because I'm like, Ellie, I mean, they got to explain how they got in the room because... If Ellie, if Ellie hears that stuff, you're telling me that like she didn't just like tackle Joel, like yo, Joel, get the hell up. You know what I mean? Like she's 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 yelling his name when she's already at gunpoint. You're like, all right, how did they, Henry and Sam get in the room? To I'm begin gonna assume with? It, it could be the air thing, or maybe they were already in there, or maybe I, that's what I'm assuming they point. were already in there know. and they were hiding yeah. in like, the bathroom or something, and then yeah. they finally got let out when they were both asleep. But that's how the episode ends and and essentially when i'm thinking about this my overall feelings about it i i thought it was a good episode because of the like i said the biggest thing is the dynamic right you're establishing the connection between joel and ellie which we saw in the games like that joel has been putting like putting a barrier up right about his emotions and everything this whole time which is what happens in the game, right he doesn't like being connected to people because he realizes in his world that you're connected to people there's a good chance that you can be hurt, right? And that's what he felt with Tess. That's what he feels with obviously his daughter. And he's starting to now let his guard down. And that's kind of the point of the, sh that's why I was so emphasis on that connection. As much as last episode had good, like a sad story, it was a good story. I just missed that connection between the two of them, which was, was what I was wanted to see. And that's what this episode did. It, that's why in my opinion, it's a better episode than last week. The only downside I'm looking at here is that there's not enough, right? You need, we need more. And the fear I have is that because when you think about this chapter, right? Let's just say just chapter four, you're now carrying over chapter four with two episodes long, right? And the next episode, based on the foreshadowing or the sneak peek, it looks like a lot of backstory about Henry and Sam, what happened to this QZ, what happened to this group that, you know, everything that's going on. And obviously they're going to have the, the climactic point of all the craziness is going to happen. But I'm like, dude, you're, you're using two episodes for this chapter. That means you're going to have to start condensing stuff. And my fear is that you condense something that's super important or really 
really good and, and you don't get the full effect of it. So that's my general feeling about the episode. I want to get your guys' opinions though, because obviously this that's just my opinion. But Haki, why don't you let you go first, then Langella kill. So Haki, what was your overall feeling of this episode based on all the events we just talked about? Yeah, so again, uh strong episode. I think we're all in agreement of that. Um I think we're we all agree that the best part of the story is the bond and the story between Joel and Ellie and they got back to the roots of that. So again, very important. You know, they had the some of the jokes. She she has the you know the, the joke book that she's she's using. Obviously the last joke is, is probably the funniest I've heard yeah. and so did Joel, which was funny, you know. Um but they had the, the, the magazine and the car and everything which was which was right like from a, the game. That was right from the game. game yeah. Not from the game, you know, which was funny. Um and, and I think you know the whole scene where um, you know Ellie had to to shoot the guy. You paralyze him, like Mar uh, like Marsilio was saying or Marsman was saying. You know you saw her kind of wipe her tears and and kind of just stick it down inside and kind of forget it about it and move on. And one of the things that you know I wanted to point out, and I know you guys know this, uh, but I just didn't play the game. And I've heard from you guys and I've heard from my boy D Rob that like you know supplies is just th th there's not that many supplies. So. Joel didn't shoot the guy, right? I, I, I he stabbed him, right? He stabbed, yeah. yeah, like he just stabbed him and killed him via stab, you know, which kind of flicked something off in my mind. Like, oh man, I mean, there's really, you know, one he didn't want to make noise, and two he didn't want to waste one bullet, you know. So that really just puts emphasis on, you know, um, sometimes you got to sneak around, uh, you know, people and 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 infected. So I thought that was a, a pretty cool shot. Um, yes, and seeing Kathleen, you know, the the new character was pretty cool. Um, she is pretty ruthless. She killed the doctor that uh, helped yeah. further, you know. So, um, you know, I, I can't wait to see how really savage she is once maybe infected show up or, or you know, they get into a real conflict with Henry and Sam. So, again, the whole episode was, was definitely on the right track uh, this week. So I'm assuming the buildup is going to be pretty big. I'm excited to see what is underneath that, uh, that all that cement. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed the episode and I uh, can't wait for next week. Yeah, Langelica, what did you think overall, man? Well, I'm going to say, uh, again, I, I think there's, there's two sides to this. Obviously, you wish that this overall season was an episode or two longer, but that also means that you're enjoying the season, right? So, you know... It, some other shows that I watched, I wish there were less episodes that I didn't have to put myself through. But, you know, this one, we were hoping that it'd be one or two longer. Um, I like the details. I think, you know, you guys both mentioned really good things that I also enjoy. But details to me, they talked about the gasoline in the beginning. You know, gasoline does go bad. That's a actual real thing. All all these apocalyptic shows kind of just brush through that. Like you have never ending gas that you can just go and like, you know, gas goes bad. You know, you talked about like the bullets thing, like when you have to, if you, it's worth stabbing someone to death instead of wasting rounds. And these are actual people, right? Like you're killing actual people. You saw a younger individual almost kill Joel. And when he realized he was going to die, practically begging for his life and calling for his mom. So like you've seen things that are like real things, even though it's an apocalypse, you know, a world that we don't live in today. But like, those are like felt very real. And that dialogue you mentioned between the two, I mentioned the thing I'm not going to give her a chance, Kathleen, the, you know, she doesn't sound very smart. I don't know how she became the leader of the hunters um, from the from the beginning, to be quite honest with you. It feels like Pierce should be more of the leader. That is kind of her right hand man. But again, I'm going to give her a chance. Her voice is kind of like it's very soft, but she was brutal. She showed that she has a brutal act. She shows that she's kind of crazy. She's hell bent on finding Sam. I mean, Henry so much that it's probably clouding her judgment. She didn't want to tell anybody about the ground dividing, you know, which I mean, I don't know if how many people saw the next week's episode, but I think we have a good idea. We're going to see a new infected next week. And I think that's resulting in that divot in the ground. So, yeah. um, you know, those are the good stuff. I like the banter again, the joking. And obviously the Henry and Sam, little detail. Maybe they brush over it, like how they get into the room. Maybe they do it because Joel slept on the wrong side. Um, would it be a little, you know, whatever. But I also like the detail that, hey, you know, Joel is 56 years old. Like he's not some, he's not Kratos running around. He's not Master Chief running around. He's not Rambo running around. Like this is, this is an older guy who's not, some enhanced being and like they make him feel like a real 56 year old who 
you know, like he can fight, but like that at times he's going to struggle versus he struggled versus the clicker, struggle versus that hunter that caught him by surprise. So those are good details to have. Yeah, no, I do agree, and I think that's why you know a lot of the, the little details that they have in this episode, as well as just the show, have been things that Last of Us as a game has done before, yeah. and obviously the, they do have some adjustments from the game, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But the, yeah, the, the themes of like you, you know each person is its own. They're, they're their own character, right? They're yeah. their own person, and they always did that in the game where you you killed somebody and they're pleading for their life, or like yeah. you, some dudes like sees them die and like, oh my god, it's Jimmy, and Jimmy's yeah, dead, yeah. and you're like, oh crap, like I just killed this guy's friend, like that's that's yeah. messed up. Like, you know what I mean? Like there, there's always a little things that they did in the game that they really made the whole story brutal, right? That's the whole point is that it's brutal, and I think that's kind of the the reason why that. I thought it could appeal to a lot of people because people like brutal, right? On HBO, they they love brutal stuff. So I thought they did a good job, and I think they're doing overall a great job for the show. I just think that they, I'm a little nervous about what could happen in the future. But uh, any last words, guys, before we close out? Yeah, I mean, I'll say I'll say this. Um, we know, like in nowadays, that every TV show, whether it's a game that you know game adaptations. They're going to have some Hollywood change. Like, we know this is going to happen. And what you would hope for and what we all hope for is that it stays as closer to the game as it could because that's what kind of got it there. So, mm -hmm. to me, again, I'm not against deviations. I'm I'm against character deviations more than anything. Um, because, like, yeah, you can make little things change. As long as they make sense, I can tolerate it. As long as the overall plot and the overall characters are not harmed. Yeah. And so, if... Going into the future, I am pulling for this to go the right way the rest of the way because maybe it'll encourage with Edge Runners, with Arcane, with Last of Us, it will encourage new IPs to say, hey, you know what? We can make these game shows, and if we stick close enough, we can have the same or similar success. I do agree, and I will be kind of doing my own analysis when we get to the halfway point of the show and kind of uh, making some comparisons to some uh, some things going on in other shows. And if you do want to see my overall feelings about game adaptations, you can always check that out in the video up in the uh, card up above. It months ago. That yeah, I did that ago. months ago, and I called it, man. I called that a long time ago. So go check that out in the card above. But we are going to sign off for the night. Do appreciate everyone that came out to watch. Please make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. And let us know in the comments, what do you think about the episode overall, and how do you think the show is doing as a whole as well as join us on our Twitch channel. And, uh, and please may hit that follow button. We are doing streams at least three days a week, definitely Tuesdays and Thursdays, and one wild card day throughout the week. And make sure you join us on social media on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Discord, and all those are located in the description below. But until next time, this is Marsman from Marsman Gaming signing off. Peace out, guys. <laughs>